Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off with a quick update to the RTX 4090. It has received a bump in its specifications. We've got a lot of other stuff to talk about in this video, so I'm going to make this brief. But 16,384 FP32 units, as opposed to the 16,128 touted previously. So this is a small increase in CUDA cores, but it could still have ramifications, of course, in performance. And we still don't know what clock frequencies NVIDIA are targeting either. So maybe NVIDIA squeezed a little bit more clock frequency than initially thought as well. Although, again, these frequencies haven't been stated with Copy T7 Kimmy, at least in these tweets. Personally, I've heard around 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz, but given this was really quite some time ago, so it's not like the silicon was even close to being final and the information could have been wrong anyway, I wouldn't put too much faith in that. We're going to have to wait until a little bit later on, until closer to launch, and we'll have a launch update actually in just a moment as well. The RTX 4090 is still utilizing AD102-300 with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory running at 21 GPPS, so this does seem to be identical and still 450 watt power consumption. As a quick reminder, this is not the full implementation of AD102, which is all 144 SMs. So it's possible that we could see an RTX 4090 Ti with closer to that number and possibly even a Titan as well, which could be utilizing like 800 or even 1000 watts of juice, which is kind of bonkers to think of and possibly even 48 gigabytes of memory. But yeah, now I want to shift focus just for a moment onto the RTX 40 release dates. We've discussed release dates so many times previously, and this is just basically further evidence that they may have shifted their release date targets. WCCF Tech initially reported this, and then Copa D7 Kimmy, myself, and some others were also stating this seemed to have happened. And now videocars.com have apparently checked with multiple of their sources, and generally speaking, their info is pretty good. So, it seems that the RTX 4090 does release first, it's in September, then October is the RTX 4080, and then again, November is going to be the RTX 4070. There is still a lot of mixed information, honestly, as to why the release date has changed. I've heard everything from no, September was always the original launch date, and basically the previous info was just wrong, although I'm not certain this is the case or not, because it goes basically against what one of my really good sources told me, and I have a lot of faith in that source, and that source told me that it's basically just got to do with the fact that NVIDIA held it back so that they could pretty much get rid of the RTX 30 series. One reason you could possibly say this is true is because obviously mining has crashed at the moment. Really, it doesn't necessarily matter in the perspective of just like us. The Bottom line, honestly, is if you're looking to buy a high-end card, so for example an RTX 3090 or a 3080, at this stage, my personal advice to you is just don't buy one, wait, and then get like the RTX 40 series or RDNA 3. If, on the other hand, that's not within your budget, which is super duper fair enough, if you don't have that kind of cash, instead you're looking at more like a 3050 or a 3060, Possibly now is a good time to pick one up, especially used, because, you know, this is not really the video for this, but, you know, you guys can just check eBay or whatever your, you know, particular retailer of choice is, and you can see that they are just going really cheap at the moment. Again, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies have just crashed. Also, a small update for Intel's Raptorink. So, basically, Sysoft Sandra, I'm sure most of you guys have heard of that, have basically compiled a plethora of leaked benchmarks using their own software and have created a review of sorts. Now, I say it in such a tone because obviously it's not a review. It's basically a performance preview of engineering sample processes. And so, A, this is not running at final clock frequencies by any stretch of the imagination. We'll get into that in just a second. And also things like BIOS and stuff are probably not exactly running at their peak. And that is putting it mildly, plus a plethora of other issues, which I'm sure you guys can imagine. But, yeah, the 
engineering sample is running up to 50% faster than a 12900, despite the fact that the clock frequency is just at 3.7 gigahertz. I'm going to leave a link to the Sysoft Sandra results in the video description, as well as a WCCF Tech article, because they've done a pretty nice uh, breakdown of all of the results. I'm not going to read out all of these results because I'll be here until Christmas, and I think you guys can kind of get the idea yourself. Obviously, the fact that we're looking at much lower clock frequencies is heavily influencing the result here but it is looking pretty impressive it is also worth noting that these are not indicative of gaming results for what it's worth i do think that raptor link as i've mentioned several times at this point is going to be a really nice architecture i suspect that it and uh, zen 4 are going to compete fiercely over the next couple of months especially for pr obviously after release there's also going to be you know a lot of the latest skews and to me Perhaps that's going to be more interesting how the lower end of all of these prices is going to end up battling it out in terms of pricing, which actually brings me to a couple of very small things that I've personally been hearing over the past few days. I was going to make a kind of exclusive video and focus on these, but honestly, I've got so many other things that I'm working on for the channel and there's just been stuff going on in the background. Uh, I did want to throw them in here because I find them kind of interesting. So these just kind of bonus things. I want to start things out with just a quick update for AM4, actually. One of my sources has told me that we're going to be seeing Zen 3 Plus launch on AM4. I don't have specifics yet as to what SKUs are going to be actually launched, and this actually goes against what Robert Halleck has said recently in an interview. He said that there might be new CPUs released for AM4, but nothing is planned for now. But if there's a business case for it, sure. sure. This was, again, in an interview with Robert Halleck. Um, but... It's possible that he just didn't want to divulge that information or something's happened internally. And it possibly would make sense because AM4 obviously could be more of an entry-level platform for AMD. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if this is the case, honestly. I'm reporting this as a, huh, that's interesting, rather than an actual leak because I've only had one source that's told me this and another one has told me that they've not heard anything like that. I've asked them and uh, they've told me that they're not sure. But the other thing that is quite interesting, and many of you guys might remember this project because it's been doing the rounds, <laughs> and that's putting it mildly, for quite a while. And it is AMD's Project Quantum. So this is actually one of those projects that seem to have just been like constantly reborn, fades away, reborn, fades away. It's basically AMD's hardware version of Half-Life 3 at this point. But we actually saw some hints that this could be revitalized with a patent. Now, this was back in the midst of 2020, actually around October of 2020. I'll leave the Extreme Tech link in the video description. But you can actually see the initial designs here of Project Quantum, which AMD were touting at the time of powered by two Radeon R9 Fiji GPUs. Obviously, this is quite some time ago. And fully liquid-cooled. It's a new PC form factor, a unique approach to combine a powerful hardware within a small form factor without compromises to thermals or acoustics, designed to deliver the best possible VR experiences with AMD's liquid VR technology, says the slide. Now, rather curiously, and Grayman55 on Twitter actually spotted this, you can see possibly a hint that this is actually coming back from an official slide from AMD's recent financial event with the Navi free graphics. You can see that he's helpfully put a nice little circle around it there so it can't exactly be easily missed. But yeah, I have been told now by a couple of sources that AMD are considering bringing it back and at the very least are prototyping it internally. Now, what would the purpose be of this? Well, it seems to essentially be some type of competitor, of course, to Intel's Nook. Um, and they seem to be wanting to offer it out, however, rather than building it internally, um, basically they would be offering it to partners. Now, this is an example, but this is not a mentioned partner. I'm just using this as an example, but someone like Asus or MSI or whomever could obviously get this and start building it. And it, of course, could be configurable for a plethora of scenarios. I don't have a ton of information at the moment on this. Um, but again, a couple of my sources have told me that this is true, and one of them has so far been really accurate with a bunch of stuff, so whether this sees the light of day, it's too early to know. Again, a prototype doesn't necessarily equate to a product that launches, but the fact that it has 
well, okay, I wouldn't say hinted, but you could take it as being hinted at at this slide. It's kind of cool. I mean, I would be welcome to to actually testing it out. I think that uh, it could be quite popular. But then again, I don't really know what the, you know, the usage cases would be. Obviously, at the end of the day, we don't even have the specifications. AMD are messing around with a ton of stuff at the moment in terms of APUs as well, of course. So there is a ton of customization and flexibility that AMD could implement with one of these things. So let's see. But that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you did, leave a likey on the video and of course, you know, share it and all of that stuff and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.